Hey guys, it's Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video and in today's video I'm going to be talking about two things right now that is really making it difficult for me to stay motivated in Raid Shadow Legends. These are two things that I think they absolutely have to change as quickly as possible because it is an absolute frustration point for me as a, as a late game player. Now some of these things might not affect you if you're not in this area of the gameplay but for me where I've kind of completed most of the game content with the exception of some of Sintranos kind of like completing all 101 floors like I've beaten Amius, I've beaten all the Doom Towers, I've beaten all the difficulties of Hydra. Really what makes the game fun and continue to be interesting is trying to push the sort of limits and try and win and try and kind of achieve like big power peaks and kind of like push myself to the bin max. Right? I'm, I'm trying to make the best teams possible with the least amount of kind of time and resources. And really what is killing me is there's two things. Let's talk about the first thing because this is really quite a straightforward issue. I have been stuck on this mission for about two weeks now it's coming up to where it's about a week and a half earn 40 immortal essence from the iron twins i have been buying the 150 gems every single day and it pains me to do it because most people know you get the really good rates on a sunday right sunday is the only day you get void so you get double the drop rate so it kind of makes the 150 gems worth it but for every single other day about a thousand or about 1200 mortal soul coins which is effectively one mortal soul coin is not worth the 150 gems now because i'm trying to get to maris as quickly as possible because i do really want to be one of the first creators to get a video on him and i know i've still got another mission further down the line which is to get 80 of this immortal essence i've been buying the gems i would not recommend anyone do it it's the most painful experience in in the game because it is simply just taking too long i cannot actually wail on this i can only do 12 keys a day and the drop rates from this iron twins fortress is appallingly bad for essence essence is meant to be a method for target farming souls and it literally makes me not want to play iron twins that's how bad it is it's not worth me getting a, about one mortal soul stone at this point i can get more from just doing hydra and not spend the energy per day so i often will do the first six keys because i don't have much else to spend my energy on but buying the 150 gems just does feel so bad and trying to get this essence is difficult i have managed to get in approximately over 100 keys of iron twins 16 essence and considering when we go into the soul merchant to get any sort of meaningful soul which we don't actually have here like a, a four star epic soul is worth 100. now i need to basically spend about 600 keys if i just wanted to farm the eternal essence now many of you will probably be saying well you get one coin one stone a day so basically on average it's about 600 mortal soul coins and that would obviously give you a lot of these essence so yeah it's not going to be exactly 600 keys it's probably going to be around 200 keys but you can see what I mean. Like, that's just a four-star epic soul. It's so expensive that, I'll be honest, I come into the soul merch and have a little look. And the only things I ever buy is the six-star soul, if I can, and I save up my eternal essence for epics. Because there is no way that I can see, like, personally for me, trading 300 of this eternal essence for a six-star legendary soul. It just takes too long. It's like six months' work minimum of basically min maxing and selling everything just to get one six star legendary soul they need to change these drop rates in the 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 iron twins if they're going to be looking at these bosses when they do the boss rebalance please player and make it like dust make it so that it is a better chance and it has an optional drop rate i would absolutely be fine having a 50 percent chance that i get one to two essence per run I, that would work for me because at least it would feel like i'm continuously getting it at the moment, I, I I log in, I use my one twelve keys, and then I get about two thousand coins, and I get disappointed, and I hate the fact I spent one hundred fifty gems. So, right now, I have no idea how long this one mission is going to be taking me. Uh, I've been tracking my progress amongst uh, Green Virus, who's one of my uh, one of my members of my community, and also some of my clan mates. Some of them have got lucky, but a lot of us have now got absolutely sort of stuck on either this one or the next one, which is the eighty. And it is the most brutal experience possible because you just simply can't get it. It's very narrow, very niche mission. So let's start with that one first. That is one of the main things I wish they would change is can we please have some better essence drop rates so that people can actually target farm the souls that they would really want. They're giving us a lot more five star souls these days, which is great. They tend to be more for more recent champions. But there's a lot of champions in the game that we're using, especially now with Epic Empowerment coming 
where we would really want to get up their blessings up to at least like a four star so they get the crit damage bonus or maybe the five star for the effect. Being able to work towards that is a much more valuable thing rather than just feeling like this is kind of like a marketplace where you can window shop but in reality you probably will never have enough resources to be able to get the soul that really matters for you. As you can see here, I have not exchanged any of my stones, so my coins so far. This is how many coins I've, I've kind of accumulated over the last three weeks of farming Iron Twins. I'm just holding on to them because I'll have a mission soon that I have to exchange the coins and really there's just no reason to pull these outside of an awakening boost which is on right now. So that's the first thing. Fix the Iron Twin drop rates when you do the boss rebalance. Don't just fix the bosses, fix the rewards a little bit. Now let's come on to the one topic I've talked about a lot is, is going to be Hydra Clash. Right now, Hydra Clash is the most demotivating, demoralizing game content for an end to late game player. It is killing the motivation of so many clans. I lead one of the clans in our cluster. It is so hard for me and my mem the members of my clan to stay positive and keep pushing these Hydra Clash rewards when the, the game system is just so terribly balanced. This week we were doing quite well. We were holding third. We were up against some pretty competitive clans, but the, you know, the clans up in the sort of PLG and auxiliary, they are well built players, very, lots of three to four billion members of the clan. So it was a pretty good contest. I was pretty happy that our clan was able to compete and get up into third. You know, we weren't far off the sort of first, the, the second and third place there. But overnight, with two hours to go, of course, what happened, you all know by now, the clan got trundered. Because Plarium do not want to nerf Trunder, this is what most players are afraid of when we do Hydra Clash. Essentially, this one player has all the right champions, has the six-star blessing on Trunder, which means he can do 20 billion damage on Nightmare, which roughly translates to about 83 billion clash points. And that is more clash points than the entirety of any other clan in Hydra Clash. Just that one key. It's not even the other members of his clan. The entire competition was defeated by one team with one key. And this is so imbalanced for a clan competition. Effectively, clans don't matter here because unless, you know, we are all going to be running this team, this team is just, just going to dominate the clan completely. He, he is carrying his entire clan to victory. He took the clan from fifth to first. Now, this might sound like I'm a, I'm a sore loser. Now, to some extent, I'm a little bit of a sore loser because we went from three to fourth. And this is one of the things I definitely would want to change. We absolutely shouldn't have this experience where we work really hard to build some damage teams. I was up last night on stream pushing the extra hour that I normally wouldn't do to try and get the brutal key into a good position to make sure that the clan could win third. I was doing it not just for myself, but for my clan so that everyone in the clan can benefit. And then to wake up and actually realize that all of that effort and all of that grind was pretty worthless because one person came along with overpowered champions, unbalanced champions, and absolutely dominated us and pushed us into fourth. So it means nobody in the clan gets anything. All of those hours committed, nobody in the clans gets nothing for this Hydra Clash. All they get is the standard rewards, which we could get by a very quick 40 million key. Very quick key. We're pushing these numbers because we want to win this and we got nothing. Nothing for our time. And that is the demoralizing factor. So the first thing that I would want to change here, give some rewards for fourth and fifth. It doesn't have to be this chest. It can be this chest. Give something to players in fourth and fifth. If you're refusing to balance Trunder, at least mitigate this problem because this is horrible for a player. This makes me, this actually made me want to just go Alt F4 and quit. It was so demoralizing to work that extra hour, grind it, feel like you're in a good position. We had about a 9 billion lead over position four at the time. And then to wake up and say, oh, you've got nothing. Absolutely nothing. You just wasted your time. I could have done 40 million. It would have been absolutely fine. And you then invariably create this nature where now a lot of the clan are like, well, maybe we should just do very bare minimum scores because this is only going to happen to players who have this team. They're all going to get pushed up. So we have to essentially force ourselves into another loss window so that we get our average matchmaking down because there is no balance. You don't know if you're going to face one of these teams. And I don't even blame the other player. The other player is just playing the system. Congrats to that other player. He's got the right champions. I don't have a problem with it. I have a problem with the fact that this punishes players so much. And then that affects clan motivation. And what happens? Eventually people burn out. Once you've defeated all the content and all you are really pushing for is these types of rewards and to have a bit of fun and to push your key damage. And then someone comes in with like 
100% more damage, that is going to kill motivation. It's going to kill clans. So how do we solve this problem? Like I've heard a lot of people say, well, you can't just nerf Trunder because what else is Trunder going to be useful for, right? This is some of the the, the feeling and, and, and narrative that came out of the sort of the, the creator conference that they went to to player and player and were like, well, you know, we're aware that Trunder is very strong. Uh, they've publicly said that they think the team is difficult to build. I can tell you it's not. It's pretty straightforward. You just basically go get yourself some Merciless from Sintranos, put a Reflex build on Emic, which is a fusion. And if you've got it, Painkeeper, it's a rare Void champion. You can build this team and still out damage pretty much the majority of other teams that aren't well built. So it's not really that difficult to build. You just have to have the champion. They're basically saying that if they nerf Trunder to stop the effect of this A2, which just for a quick TLDR how it's working, you attack one enemy, that does a, a chunk of damage. So on, a, on one decapitated head, that might be 4 million damage. It then takes 60% of the damage and then it does it to all other enemies. And if they are decapitated, it's going to remultiply that 60% again. So effectively you get twice the amount of crit damage, twice the amount of mastery damage, twice the amount of book damage. That's how it grows to such a great extent. Then you also have Hex, which means you obviously are doing like 20 million damage to a decapitated head. That's an AoE, so it's going to do 1% of that to all other, or 2% of that to all other enemies. So you keep layering the damage, and that's how you can get to these huge scores. They don't want to nerf this because they feel like Trunder would not be useful anymore because she's no longer queen of the arena. And I can see where they're coming from. She would not necessarily be very strong in arena, although I've still seen some very strong Trunders nuke you with Forge Rhythm. But I don't think that's an adequate response to this problem. You can't just go, well, we can't nerf it because then she'll be useless. She is doing more damage than any other team by a significant margin. I think the next best record without Trunder in Nightmare is about 4 billion or 3.8 billion, which is a Garol Taras team. So the next best thing is 3 to 4 billion. The world record Trunder team is like 80 or 70, or I think it's like 60 or 70 billion. 60 or 70 billion. It's almost like 100% stronger. It is so much out of the sort of balance specter that it, it's absolutely crazy. And something really needs to be done about it at this point. Something needs to be done. So how do you solve the Trunder problem? Well, you can absolutely just fix this A2 ability. The most easy and simple solution, which will probably be the worst one for what they want to avoid, which is making Trunder irrelevant, is you stop the second hit from critically hitting. You just make the second hit not critically hit because that will then mean you can't remultiply all the damage. It can still remultiply the decapitation bonus, however, so it doesn't really make it totally useless, but it should bring a lot of the power curve down because you don't get double dose of crit damage. That to me is not really a, a fix all, but it's one that they should do pretty much across the board. Any ability that does excess damage based on the first hit, like excess damage on damage after you've killed someone or a percentage of the first hit that, that second hit really shouldn't have a critical component it should be kind of fixed damage because what you end up doing is just remultiplying the damage and then you're multiplying a multiplier and it can get out of control when you have large amounts of multipliers which is what we have in hydra because there is double the decapitation so you're essentially giving this ability 400 percent on top of 600 percent because you've got 300 percent crit damage you've got 200 percent decapitation so you've got like a thousand percent more multiplication and when you multiply the multiplier, that's when it gets out of control. So that is the key thing you would do here is you'd stop the remultiplication, make this fixed damage if you really wanted to solve it, but it would make her damage output quite weak. Another solution you could do is attack all enemies with the second hit, dealing 60% of the damage inflicted from the first hit. The 60% cannot exceed a fixed value and you balance around that fixed value, like 200,000. It's kind of like a soft cap to some extent. So instead of having the 60%, 60% of whatever the first hit, that 60% can't go over a certain amount, and then you multiply that. So you can still have a valuable Trunder, bring her damage so that she can still compete with the Garol Taras teams. I'm not saying destroy the Trunder comp. I'm saying make the Trunder comp balanced. Make the Trunder comp not 100% stronger than anything else. So this is how I would do it potentially as an option. Now, if you don't want to fix Trunder at all and you want to leave Trunder at all, actually, I think one of the core problems with Hydra right now, we have reached a point in the way that we can build heroes and champions with awakening and empowerment and all these things that we can effectively ignore the boss mechanics a lot of the time. So it doesn't quite say it in the strategy here, but when a head is decapitated and then returns back, it has a buff on it that reduces incoming damage by 75%. Now the design concept here is this is meant to essentially allow the head to take a turn. 
This is meant to force the consumption counter to rotate, which is meant to force the consumption mechanic, where one of your heroes will get eaten by a Hydra head, you have to do damage to release that Hydra. But because we can output so much damage and we have the Hex debuff now, which means that we can splash a lot of damage to a lot of these heads, even through Poison Cloud, because it's not a, a critical hit, it can, and it's not sort of an attack, so it won't weak it, you can actually do quite a lot of damage to enemies in both Poison Cloud and that 75% damage reduction, which is how Trunda works. Trunda works was because she can permanently kill all the heads all the time, which means she's always attacking decapitation, which means she never has to worry about any mechanics such as provokes. She doesn't have to worry about the fear because the fear is defeated. She doesn't have to worry about having a mischief tank. You don't have to worry about having a decrease attack or a block bust for the head of wrath. You don't have to worry about you know all the poisons you're going to get because you're not going to get them. The reflect buff, all of these things you don't have to worry about. You effectively ignore every mechanic that the Hydra gives you because you simply one-shot every head. You one-shot them all. So that is a bit of a problem. So here's my suggestion, which probably a lot of people are going to go in comments right now. And let me know in the comments if you think this is a bad idea. I would make the buff that you get when a Hydra head respawns, make the, the Hydra head immune to damage for that one turn duration. So when a Hydra head respawns, we have that immunity. Let me show you, for example, I'll just destroy a head right now. and We can actually take a look at this in more detail. So I've managed to kill some Hydra heads here. This is on kind of hard or normal. I can't remember exactly what difficulty I put it on. But you can see when the Hydra head responds, he has this buff called Serpent's Will. Now this is reducing incoming damage that this head takes by 75%. Now when I kill here, for example, if I was to say, let's just uh, whack this head over here. You can see the damage I'm dealing is pretty weak. If I was to basically A1, it's going to be really small. However, once I start putting a Hex debuff out, and I start attacking enemies with Hex, you'll see that actually I can start chipping away at this pretty quickly. We're not actually getting the philosophy of what this design concept is meant to do. It is meant to make sure that this head can take a turn. It doesn't just get instantly re-killed. But as you can see, I can put decreased speed on it. I can slow all the heads down. And then I can just bring out lots of damage. Watch the Hydra damage here. Look, 21,000. I can chunk this head down very quickly. So what I'm proposing they do, and also to improve the quality of life, is this will never allow you to deal damage to this Hydra head until this Hydra head takes a turn. Now, you might be wondering, Saf, that sounds crazy, that sounds horrible. I would also, at the same time, make it so that whilst this buff is active, the Hydra head cannot take any buffs. Because some of the worst experiences you have in Hydra is when a head respawns, say like the Head of Wrath, and then instantly before you have an opportunity to do anything, Poison Cloud gets applied. Well, if you've brought a block buffs option to deal with that, you haven't really failed in terms of your team. You haven't broken your team because you've had really bad luck. And that normally means you have to restart the run because the Wrath Head, you will probably proc before the head comes out of his Poison Cloud, 15 stacks, he'll get increased attack and he'll one-shot your team. So if you have this protection of not only the Hydra's protected, but also the Hydra Head can't receive buffs, that gives you an opportunity to go, okay, the Wrath Head is up. I need to get block buffs out of it and decrease attack. It gives me time to do that. And then when this protection falls off, then it can receive buffs. Then it can receive damage. This immediately solves the Trunda problem because Trunda cannot re-kill the heads when they come up. That slows her damage down. It probably means she has to pay attention to a lot of the mechanics of the boss and those Trunda teams will not work the same way. You will have to adapt. You cannot just go in and go kill head, kill head, kill head, kill head. Now I understand a lot of people will be saying, yeah, but that's not fun. You're killing all of my teams. A lot of my damage will fail. Well, I think actually maybe now is an opportunity for us to review Hydra and go, well, maybe there is too much damage in Hydra. The top chest of Hydra is 36 million. We're doing billions of damage. So in terms of where we should be at, we have far and above exceeded the goal of defeating the top chest. You don't see this in 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 kind of clan boss that much these days. Yes, there was the infinity comp, but most people's damage kind of tops out at about 200 mil and you need to get around about 72 mil, 73 mil for the top chest. So you can still see there's quite a lot of, con like you're close. You're not billions over millions. So maybe now is an opportunity actually for us to bring all of the damage back down and make Hydra Clash a little bit more sensible. So let me just go through some of the other changes I would also make just to balance this out a little bit. So firstly, I would make Serpents will 100% incoming damage for the duration of that buff on a one turn, which means when a Hydra Head respawns, that Hydra Head will not take damage, but I would also make it that it can't take any buffs. So you can't Poison Cloud a respawned Wrath Head. 
that helps reduce some of the RNG. If you didn't bring a block buffs or decrease attack, well, that's your decision. But the game's not punishing you. The strategy is. Right now, the game will punish you if you get unlucky. If, if the Wrath Head pops just as the Poison Cloud is going to be taking a turn, there is literally nothing you can do. There is no mechanic you can bring apart from to a Messiah or Mordecai or someone who can place HP Burn without actually attacking. That is the only answer to that problem or someone who can place like Cantra. Very, very, very niche strategies. And you're, you're not going to want to build a team for the 1% chance, but that 1% chance can happen over a longer fight. So that's the first thing that I would do. Fix that problem. Because what you will find then is the consumption counters will matter more as well because Hydra Heads are taking extra turns, which means you have to work around the consumption counter, which means it makes it more strategically important that your team has these things. And it solves another major problem that people have, which is time. You will not be able to hit turn limit when you're having to deal with all these consumption counters, which is what the design of the, the, the Hydra is meant to be. This is what Hydra was meant to be. That consumption counter was meant to limit the, how long you could go in a, in a Hydra boss run. The problem is right now we can just ignore it and keep going, which means that you have to keep going as a player if you want to compete. You have to do the 1500 turn limit if you want to compete. And I think that's bad for the player. Bring that back down. So that's the first thing I would do. Serpent's Will, 100% incoming damage for the duration, but it can't receive buffs. You can still debuff it. You can still put block buffs, decrease attack. You can prepare to fight it, but you have to allow it to take a turn. So then the other thing I would do, uh, Hide Up Light here, I think is pretty okay. I think the Poison Cloud is a good counter. You know you need to bring a block buffs or a burn. I think that's absolutely okay. That's not really a problem. There isn't really much I would change about this. He brings poisons. It's pretty straightforward. Torment Head for me is one of the most toxic heads in Hydra because there is so few counters. The mechanic is fine. There's just not enough perfect veils. So I would literally go through and find five or six epics as part of your epic empowerment and make them have perfect veil. I would also maybe reduce this so there's another way that you can counter the true fear other than just perfect veil because I think that's a really big frustration for a lot of players is a lot of the perfect veils tend to be a four turn cooldown, so therefore you, you can't really sustain it. For me, what I would like to see here is it's not just perfect veil, it's also increased resistance. So you resist the fear thematically. Put another effect alongside the perfect veil so I have more options or give me more perfect veil champions that I can actually use in the Hydra. Right now, it's still, you have to bring a two Hanarak or a Doom Priest, which is not ideal because you've got to make sure that they go before the that your allies go, so it's very difficult to make happen. A Duchess, which always requires you to bring a buff extender, and you always feel like Duchess is just there for the Veil. It, she doesn't really add enough value, but she, she's there for the Veil. Feral is probably the best in class right now because it gives you block buffs, but that's one champion. Uh, and I think one of the new champions is also a pretty good budget kind of Feral in that sense where it can place Perfect Veil. Outside of that, you're then going to, I best bring Shamael, or you just accept the fears. And it is the worst experience when you just cannot manage this because you're just getting feared all the time. So more Perfect Veil champions to solve this or add another way for me to stop the true fear. Otherwise, this is just not fun to play. Head of Mischief, I think, is fine. Uh, it absolutely works okay. You can counter it by making sure that you've got a buff. It is balanced in that sense. Head of Wrath, I think the biggest problem people have with Head of Wrath is this kind of the Head of Wrath spawns and you have no time to deal with it. I think if you had the Serpent's Will, you have a chance to basically put block buffs up. As long as there's a block buffs and decrease attack, most people can survive a Head of Wrath so long as you've got your team relatively strong. Like maybe you've got a shield or a strengthen or something to protect your team or they're built in a good amount of defense. A decrease attack and a block buffs stops a lot of the power that his passive kind of produces. And I think it's just kind of like giving you time to do that is what you need in the battle, right? Giving you more consistency that you can actually control him before Poison Cloud comes in. Head of Decay, I think, is also okay. I think we've now got enough provokers between people like Islin. Wixwell, I think, will be very good for this. There's Krisk. There's also Bivold. There's uh, Morley. There's Archer. I know I shouldn't mention the word Archer, but you know what I mean? There's plenty of heroes that can provoke. And I think it's a pretty good counter mechanic. If you don't provoke it, you're going to get cleansed. If you do provoke it, you shouldn't get cleansed. The only thing I think is quite annoying is this targeting, where it will target the lowest HP. Because a lot of the provokers, like Islin, uh, also Wixwell, they can't take advantage of their counterattack passives. So I would actually maybe change this and just remove the lowest HP and still have heal reduction if you want. 
um, or it attacks the provoked target will then place heal reduction on the lowest HP. Make it so that it actually attacks the person that's provoking it so that I can take advantage of these counterattack passives. Otherwise, the rest of the ability set is fine. Again, not a problem. Head of Suffering, I think, again, is okay. The only thing I would suggest about the Head of Suffering is the consumption mechanic can be a bit painful because of the extra turns. You know, he goes extra turn into this. Maybe they shouldn't have the extra turn. That might just simplify the fight a little bit so it, it kind of extends the turns because this is quite difficult to deal with if you get a consumption and you also have a life barrier on it. It can be awkward. It's not as bad as the Wrath Head popping up, but I still think maybe get rid of the extra turn so he just goes, places a Pain Link, then that one, then that one, as all the other Hydra Heads do. Balance those Hydra Heads slightly, but I think the Serpent's Will, 100%, can't be buffed whilst under Serpent's Will. That should eradicate almost all of these exploitive mechanics because you cannot constantly keep cycling the decapitation. The window in which decapitation heads are up is lower. You might be able to kill those heads pretty quickly after they lose the Serpent's Will, but every single head has to take a turn when it respawns, and that would make it so much better. It will solve the Trender problem. Now, I know a lot of people in comments will probably be like, yeah, but that'll kill all my teams. I'll have to rebuild everything. I would do it alongside a regearing event, and I would do some incentives to make sure people had an opportunity to rebuild it. But this is the only way you're going to solve this problem without nerfing Trunday, in my opinion, is change the way that Hydra works so you can't just exploit and ignore all the mechanics. Right now, Trunda does not care what these heads do. All she cares about when she attacks is which head has the lowest defense that I can do the most damage on. And it's to some extent, you don't even care about that because once you get Crushing Rend, you get Merciless Cruel, you get Helm Smasher, you're doing true damage anyway. That will solve that problem. So there you go. Those are the two things right now I feel like absolutely needs to be reviewed. They need to fix the Iron Twins drop rates because Essence is almost forgettable in that content. Make it like Dust so that it happens more regularly and it's a bonus reward, not a replacement reward because yeah, I mean, it feels pretty bad to lose coins just to get like a few essence. And I would increase the rates and spread them out a little bit more. And then change the Hydra Clash here so that we actually fix some of the boss mechanics. So we have to fight the Hydra again, not the damage simulator, which is what we're basically doing these days is how much damage can I do to a decapitated head? It's not actually what the Hydra heads do anymore. I think if you change that Serpent's Will, you make it 100%, you immediately start balancing Hydra Clash and you will save lots of time because we won't have to run an hour and a half runs constantly and if you you know what if you have a six star awakened trunder and you can do a couple of billion on nightmare congrats that's not a problem you just should not be able to do 60 50 40 billion because that is just unmanageable and and like it's just demotivating for a lot of players who just don't have the trunder and it should never be that one champion is that far ahead there always will be a meta there'll always be one team that's better than everything else they're like, for example, max HP champions are generally better in Hydra at Nightmare. That's fine. But they're not so much better that it almost defeats the entire clan. One team should not be able to do more damage than an entire clan's worth of contribution. That's that's just not balanced. That is just not good health for the game. Let me know in the comments below, guys, what do you think about these kind of suggestions? I've tried to approach it not from a nerf my champions, but maybe fix the game content and try to think about how it affects everyone consistently and everyone can still get on board. I know a lot of people will probably say making that Serpent's Will harder is not really good for the player because it makes the content harder, but I do think maybe we do need to make Hydra a little bit more, you know, remember the Hydra has mechanics. That might actually improve the whole experience. And I would say, as I mentioned right at the start of this video, make it so that fourth and fifth place get something for their time. Don't reward me nothing for my contribution of time. Just give me this chest as position five. It's not a problem. Like if I get some, you know, a little bit of primal quartz, some clan gold, and, and maybe the one or two five-star stone skin amulet, that's great. It's not going to be as good as, you know, six-star and, and, and a guaranteed primal shard and all these kind of things, but it's better than nothing. Even if you have to create more chests and give less rewards, give me something for my time, not just completely nothing. There we go, guys. That is the end of the video. Thanks for watching and enduring my demoralized tone today. I am trying not to make this sound like I'm annoyed because I lost because that is not what I'm trying to suggest. I'm trying to say that it feels really difficult as a leader of a clan to keep people motivated and pushing hard when someone comes in and basically outperforms the entire clan by nearly double the points with one champion. It's really difficult to stay motivated. So let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.